From the Ear to There Travel Studio, this is the Ear to There Disney Podcast. Welcome aboard the Ear to There Podcast, the podcast that'll help you vacation like a pro in any Disney destination. For those of you standing, please sit down and hold on throughout our journey and get ready to learn how to have the time of your life. And now, here's your host, Phil Gremlick. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ear to There podcast. I am your host, Phil Gramlich. I am also the owner and operator of Ear to There Travel, which is a Disney specialized travel agency. And if this is your first time listening, you might not know that it is my job to take away all the stress, all of that time, all of that anxiety that it takes to book a Disney trip. So you can focus on the fun things like having a phenomenal time with your friends and family and enjoying the magic. You can find this podcast, my blog, or request a free, no obligation quote over at eartothertravel.com. I am also in the middle of training for the Dopey Challenge in Walt Disney World in January. And I have a podcast that's also chronicling, that's a good word, (laughs) chronicling my adventures and my training. There's also a little bit of life, a little bit of seriousness, a lot of goofiness thrown there in there. So I hope you will listen to this show as well. It's called Running for Sandwiches. You can find that one over at runningforsandwiches.com or on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or wherever you find your podcasts. Alrighty, this is episode number 88 for the week of September 11th, 2017. Now grab a drink. Grab a snack, and as a famous mouse once said, on with the show. Walt Disney World has literally hundreds of different places that you could choose to eat. From signature restaurants, to table service, to counter service, to stands, and kiosks, your choices are pretty endless, right? So I wanted this week to bring you a show where I talked about one of those categories of restaurants. So this week, I'm going to bring you the Walt Disney World counter service restaurants from the best to the worst. Actually, I said that incorrectly. (laughs) From the worst to the best. Off to a rolling start here on the show, but let's keep it going. So when I say worst, I don't mean that the food is bad. I don't mean it's you shouldn't go. It's not worth your time. That's not what I'm saying. But I did take everything into account. So I thought of atmosphere, food, experience, all of that stuff. And I came up with my list. And some of them I had to disqualify because the the men- Anyway, <laughs> I'll just get into it. I'll explain it as I go. Here we go. Counter service restaurants from, let's say, my least favorite to my favorite. And hopefully you'll learn a couple of things or you'll pick up a restaurant or two or 20 <laughs> that you might want to try on your next trip. So starting my list ranked all the way at the bottom of my counter service Restaurants, And let me clarify, these are in the four theme parks only, because if I included water parks, resorts, Disney Springs, this would have been a four hour podcast. I'm hoping to keep it around 45 minutes because maybe 30 to 45 minutes, because let's face it, that's about as much of just me that you're going to be able to handle. Okay. So the lowest ranked for me counter service restaurant in the four theme parks is golden oak outpost in Frontierland in the magic kingdom so why is it ranked so low well because it doesn't have much (laughs) you're you're talking about chicken nuggets basically french fries it used to be a mcdonald's uh fry stand back in the day when disney still had sponsorships from mcdonald's it has since lost the Uh, the McDonald's name when Disney got rid of all the McDonald's inside the parks. There's no air conditioning. It's all outdoor kind of standing or a little bit of seating area there. It's hot. The food's not very exciting. So that is why that is at the bottom of my list. That's Golden Oak Outpost 
in Frontierland. My next one on the list, let's move along. I'm going to go kind of quickly because there's 40 or so that I have to mention. So <laughs> we'll be here all day if I have reasons for all of them. My next one is the Refreshment Cool Post. And this one is in the Outpost area in World Showcase at Epcot. That's the one where you can play the drums. They have the, you know, the, the, the tribal, I guess, drums set up. You can kind of bang on them and let your kids burn some energy. That's always kind of fun. But again, the food there, very, very small selection. A couple different kinds of Coca-Cola, you know, drinks, soft drinks, water you can buy. That's pretty much it. So that's why that's that low on my list. Again, it's outdoor. It's at least it's shady. There's a little shaded area, but not a whole lot going on at the refreshment cool post. Next one on my list, we're going over to Hollywood Studios. And I hate to do it to you, buddy, but ABC Commissary is super, super low on my list of counter service restaurants. And you know what's funny? For some reason, for years, I ended up at, the, at this place like every time I went to Hollywood Studios. If you're like me, you probably still end up some, there sometimes because a lot of the places are closed in Hollywood Studios. There's not a lot of um, counter service options left. But to me, the and it used to have a really cool atmosphere inside. They used to have like the memorabilia from Lost. When Lost was really big, you could walk in and see like the Dharma initiative jumpsuits and they had like the numbers on display. Now it, it kind of lost that charm. <laughs> lost. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> anyway, and the food, it just isn't, it, I hate to trash it. It's just not very good. Not my favorite place. I'll go there in a pinch, but that's pretty much it. So yeah, ABC Commissary is another low one on my list. Moving on over to Disney's Animal Kingdom, and it's Starbucks, right? Creature Comforts, which is now a Starbucks, has pretty much just basic Starbucks fare. And I'm not a anti-Starbucks guy. I don't mind that it's in the parks. It's just not something that I'll seek out. I'm a Dunkin' Donuts guy, man. I'll I'll, I'll go find the Dunkin' Donuts at the Speedway gas station before I wait in line for uh, a Starbucks drink. So that's why that one is low on my list. Next one up, Sunshine Day Cafe over at Hollywood Studios. You're saying, where the heck is that? That is on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood Studios. It is not always open. It has a holiday menu uh, offering. So it's open around the holidays. And again, it's it's seasonal. It's not always open. But when it is, it has really cool, like ginger, like make your own gingerbread stuff and holiday offerings. So it's actually a fun one. It's so low on the list because it's barely ever open. So how would you get to experience it unless you're there over the holidays? All right. So that's over at Hollywood Studios. Staying in Hollywood Studios, my next one, My these are pretty low. Again, these aren't places that if I were you, I would be seeking out in the parks. And it's the Trolley Car Cafe in Hollywood Studios on Hollywood Boulevard. And why is that so low? Because, yes, it's another Starbucks. And I explained my Starbucks feelings a couple minutes ago. Again, a couple seconds ago, decades ago, paragraphs ago. I don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, I'm not a hater, as the kids say. I I don't drink the haterade for Starbucks. I'm not hating on Starbucks. Is that Did I say enough of those? Anyway, <laughs> I just, I, I wouldn't go out of my way for it. Next up on my list is another Starbucks location. I am trashing Starbucks right now. But it is Fountain View over in Epcot's Future World. It, again, Starbucks, I don't have to say a whole lot about it. I'm going to see how many times I can say the words, the word, I guess, Starbucks. During this episode, it seems like it's going to be a lot. Actually, I think I might have covered. No, there's there's still one more. All right. I'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, Fountain View, again, a Starbucks with a Starbucks style menu. Not my favorite place. Not a place I would seek out. Next up on my list, and it's a sad one, right? This one really, really pains me to say that it is this low. It is in the 30s on my list around, I don't know what it is. 35 or 34. I tried numbering this and then I got confused. I'm, I, you know, I'm not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree. So <laughs> sometimes 
I, uh, I get my numbers filled up, so I decided not to number it. But my next one is in the Magic Kingdom, and it used to be one of my favorites because of the one menu item that was introduced to me by a friend and a fellow podcaster whose Disney show is more well-known than mine, so I'm not going to mention him here and give him a free plug. But if you listen to a lot of Disney podcasts, you know who I'm talking about. And he turned me on to the pot roast mac and cheese over at Friar's Nook in the Magic Kingdom. And then, like the the mean parent that Walt Disney World can be sometimes, it took it away from me. They took my pot roast mac and cheese off the menu. Now there's like a barbecue chicken mac and cheese. Get out of here. I am not trying that mac and cheese in just completely out of protest. So that is why Friar's Nook is so low on my list. It should get out of here as well. <laughs> Listen, the mac and cheese itself is excellent. It's really good, but I'm not, I'm just not going there because of that. Okay. Next up on my list, staying in Magic Kingdom, but heading over to Tomorrowland, and it is the lunching pad. Again, it's outside. There's no air conditioning. You can't go in and cool off for a while. And and Tomorrowland's hot. It's a lot of concrete, not a ton of shade over there. It's a hot land. So while they do have some drinks at the lunching pad to keep you cool, they really basically no interesting menu items except for there is one, the ham and cheese pretzel. Now that is some pretty good stuff, but that's the reason to go there. And if I'm on vacation, I'd much rather go to one of my top, I don't know, 20 or so ranked counter service restaurants. So then next up is we're going back over to Epcot. Into the World Showcase, and it's Promenade. Is it Promenade or Promenade? I was, it's like Lemonade, so Promenade, but it could be Promenade. I don't know. As Indiana Jones says, I'm making this up as I go. And it's Promenade, we'll say, refreshments. And again, it's drinks, it's snacks, but they do have something really good over there. The Ranch Kettle Chips. That are made fresh every day. Get those. Those are awesome. And that's why the promenade, promenade, whatever, refreshments ranks as highly as it does on my list. All right, moving over. And we're actually, we're staying in Epcot for my next one. That is in the American Adventure Pavilion. And it's Fife and Drum. So Fife and Drum is that little brick stand that's standing out in front of the theater there. And Again, not a whole lot of great food to speak of. They do have a turkey leg, which is really cool. But you know what you can get to go with your turkey leg is a root beer float. And root beer floats are awesome. So that's why Fife and Drum ranks as highly as it does on my list. Also, they have, uh, if you're a beer fan, they have whatever Sam Adams seasonal beer is available to time. So right now during Food and Wine Festival at Epcot, I'm assuming it's Oktoberfest which is a really good beer. So if you're going, if you don't want the root beer float, get the Oktoberfest. Come for the turkey leg. Stay for the root beer float and the Oktoberfest. All right. So moving on. Now the list is taking us over to Magic Kingdom once again, back into Tomorrowland for the seasonal Tomorrowland Terrace. Does anyone remember when it was the noodle station for a while? The Tomorrowland Terrace was... Like this place where you can go and get noodles. I don't know why. I don't know what's futuristic about noodles. <laughs> but that's where you could go to get them. Now it's, again, this one is seasonal. Uh, it's not open all the time. But they do have a spicy fried chicken sandwich. Uh, smoky sausage sandwich or sausage. However you say it. How do you say that word? Another one that I don't really. I'm not confident in my pron pronunciation of those words. Promenade, promenade, sausage, sausage. I don't know. I think it's my accent. My Philadelphia accent gets me all fouled up. Anyway, <laughs> they have a pulled pork sandwich over there too. So again, it's seasonal, which makes it, which is why it ranks lower on my list. But the food is good and unique when it is open. So for my next trick, we're going over staying in Magic Kingdom, going to Adventureland, or is it Frontierland? It's right on the edge. And it's another seasonal location, the Tortuga Tavern. Don't let the name fool you. There is no alcohol served at the Tortuga Tavern or Gaston's Tavern for that matter. <laughs> anyway, Tortuga Tavern has a barbecue brief biscuit, biscuit, not a biscuit, <laughs> brisket sandwich. 
It's basically barbecue, barbecue pork, barbecue chicken, and then a couple of uh, roasted corn and vegetable salads. It's it's a fine menu, and when it's open, I will sometimes go there, but it's not always open. It's seasonal. If the parks are super busy, that's when you'll find it open. All right, let's now go to, I think we've reached the top 30. So this is number 30. And for number 30, we're going over to Disney's Animal Kingdom and Pizzafari. Why is Pizzafari number 30 and not higher and not lower? It's basically Disney pizza. And while there's really nothing wrong with Disney pizza, there's nothing fantastic or really great about Disney pizza either. So that's why Pizzafari is on my list at number 30. But guess what? You can get a cold drink. It's air conditioned. There's a lot of seating in there. So if you're in Animal Kingdom and you need a place to cool off, and if you're, you know, not a really big picky pizza person, that's hard to say, then maybe Pizza Fari is worth a shot for you. All right. Number 29, heading over to uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios, and it's Catalina Eddie's. Again, Catalina Eddie's, not a really super uh, fun menu. It's pizzas, same style pizza as Pizza Fari, basically. But they do have something there that other places have as well, and that is the kids' power packs. Now, these are a big, like, argument (laughs) saver for me and my children in the parks because they have things like Danimals yogurt and goldfish, and your kids will eat them if they're picky eaters. There's like, it's basically like a little snack box for kids, all kinds of kid friendly foods inside of it that they'll eat. They have those not just at Catalina Eddie's. They have them at uh, lots of locations all around Walt Disney World. Just look for them on the menu. They have kept many uh, of a, <laughs> many a child in my family quiet uh, when they lose their minds a little bit at the parks. All right, so on to number 28 on my list, and I'm going with right next door, basically, to Catalina Eddie's at Hollywood Studios, and it's Rosie's All-American Cafe. Now, one cool, unique thing that you won't find just anywhere at uh, in, in Walt Disney World is on Rosie's menu, and that is a fried green tomato sandwich. And honestly, I don't know how this ranks for you fried green tomato sandwich enthusiasts out there. I've only eaten one in my life, and it was from Rosie's, and I really liked it. So that's why I'm mentioning it and putting it at number 28 on my list. If you're looking for something different, we don't get a lot of fried green tomatoes in my neck of the woods. So if you're looking for something different, that might be a fun one to try. All right, on to my next one, number 27. And I I thought I was all done bashing Starbucks earlier, but alas, I am not. I said alas, I've been watching way too much Game of Thrones lately. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up. I'm on season seven, finally. My wife, I think, is going crazy because I've been hogging the TV at night. I, I've been trying to catch up because everyone was talking about it. I was like two seasons behind. I think I've watched like 20 hours of Game of Thrones in the last couple of weeks just because I want to be able to talk about it with people. I, I like the show a lot. I watched it for the first like five seasons or four seasons, and then I stopped. So I've been watching five and six, and I'm finally on season seven. So uh, <laughs> if you do see me or talk to me, just spoiler alert, I haven't seen any uh, of game, of season seven, really, Game of Thrones. But alas, <laughs> number 27 for me is the Main Street Bakery on Main Street, USA. Listen, I, again, I wasn't uh, anti-Starbucks. I wasn't, I have no problem with Starbucks coming into the bakery. But that being said, some of the menu items were lost at the Main Street Bakery when Starbucks moved in. And that is why it didn't make my top 25. It comes in at number 27. Okay, on to number 26. And we're going back over to Epcot Center and the World Showcase Pavilion of Morocco and into a little known place called the Tangerine Cafe. And why did Tangerine Cafe rank at number 26 on my list? Because I will admit it, I am afraid of it. I don't eat shawarma. I've never tried it. The reason it's number 26 and not lower is is because I can't in good uh, faith rank it, you know, number 40 or number 42, because a lot of people I know really enjoy it. 
I'm a food baby. I don't try a lot of new stuff. Uh, and that is my, my issue with Tangerine Cafe. I will go in there and grab a Casablanca beer while you have your shawarma platter and we can hang out. But <laughs> I won't be ordering anything really in the Tangerine Cafe. All right, moving on. Now we're in the top 25. Here we go. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. <laughs> Number 25 is Min and Bill's Dockside Diner at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And again, not a super exciting menu. Uh, all outdoor seating. It's hot. There's some umbrellas, but they don't really keep the humidity away from you. If you get any ice cream there, watch out. It'll melt in like 12 seconds. But they do have a pulled pork sandwich there and loaded cheese nachos. Whoa, I'm sorry. Loaded chili cheese nachos is what I meant to say. Anytime you put chili and cheese on a nacho, I'm in. So there you go. Number 25. Men and Bill's Dockside Diner at Hollywood Studios. Now, number 24 takes me back over to Epcot uh, into the Germany Pavilion. And I am talking all about Summerfest. Summerfest is a little stand kind of tucked away in the pavilion. And it's known for a couple things. Bratwurst and beer. So if you're a German guy like me, I mean, listen to my last name. It's Gramlich. Or I think the German pronunciation is like Gramlich. Or Gramlich, I don't know. We say Gramlich. Anyway, even if you're not a German guy like me, you will will love uh, Summerfest. The Bratwurst back there, the beer back there. I usually go with the Oktoberfest. My wife, my wife Amy, goes with the grapefruit beer. And I know a lot of the ladies, and I'm not picking on guys if you get it. If you get the grapefruit beer, that's fine. <laughs> but a lot of my lady friends, and I mean that, not in a weird way. They get the grapefruit beer. I can't even try to pronounce it. Well, I will try. It's like Schofer Hoffer or Schofer Hofer, something like that. It's a grapefruit beer. It is delicious. So if you're looking for one of those, that's a good place to get it. And it's a shorter line usually there than getting it somewhere else at the Germany Pavilion. All right, moving on to number 23 on my list in Magic Kingdom. And again, it's another one that pains me. It hurts my heart down deep. <laughs> and you might think that's dramatic, but I'm serious. It hurts me very deeply to say it is Pecos Bill's Tall Tale Inn and Cafe. This used to be one of my absolute favorite places to eat, if not my favorite counter service place in all of Walt Disney World. The Burger with the fixings bar, you could put the mushrooms on it and the yellow, the plastic hot cheese. You had the pickles, the onions, the mushrooms, all hot right out of the pan. That fixings bar was awesome. Well, they did bring a burger back on the menu. I saw it, still no dice for me. It's not the same. Ever since the menu change, I've been, well, I've gone one time, right? I went once with my family. My kids loved the churro bites that you could dip in chocolate. They love those. And I didn't hate the food. The food was fine. It's just I miss the old menu way too much to rank this any higher than number 23 on my list. All right, moving on because it hurts too much. <laughs> on to number 22. And I'm going with, but going back to Epcot into the pavilion of China. And I am going with the Lotus Blossom Cafe. This is basic Chinese food, guys. You're not going to get too crazy here. Nothing very gourmet or unique, but it's a nice dry place to eat when the rings tear through World Showcase, which does pretty much every day. And they have egg rolls and dumplings and those kinds of kind of Americanized uh, Chinese favorites. So I like it. I have a, I'm a pretty easy uh, Chinese food guy. I'm not like super fancy or picky when it comes to Chinese food. So the Americanized kind of Chinese food is perfect for me. And that's what you'll get at the Lotus Blossom Cafe. All right, moving on to uh, number 21, taking the, you know, I'm going to walk from Lotus Blossom over to Hollywood Studios. It's a nice walk. If you haven't done it, by the way, it is a really nice walk to walk between Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Just don't do it from like, I don't know, May until September. That's way too hot. But other than that, it's a really nice walk. So I'm going to Hollywood Studios over to Pizza Rizzo. 
And again, atmosphere wins out for me in this place. The pizza is good, not great, not fantastic, but good. But the atmosphere is all things Muppets. And if you're a Muppets fan, this is kind of a must do. There are puns everywhere. The upstairs is a really cool kind of like laid back uh, old Italian restaurant kind of vibe. Very cool place to go spend some time, have a meal. So yeah, number uh, 21 is Pizza Rizzo. Now, walking back to Epcot, I got to, you know what? I couldn't do all this walking in one day unless I was training for one of the races, which I am. Uh, But number 20. All right. Wow. We're in the top 20 already. All right. Number 20 is in Epcot, in Future World, and it is the Electric Umbrella. Now, I may highly overrate Electric Umbrella. I'm going to be completely honest with you. This This might be way too high on my list. But I have really super special memories of this place. We go there for some reason after uh, on Sunday after the Walt Disney World Marathon. So for some reason, we always end up there. I think because my kids love it and they have this blue cupcake that turns my daughter, my younger daughter's face and hands completely blue for the rest of the night. And maybe we end up there because it's quick service, counter service. It's in Future World. We get to the park. We're hungry. It's right there. There's usually not too long of a wait. So. It's standard food. They do have a pretty good uh, cheeseburger there. Uh, And that is the French dip burger, which I usually get when I'm there because, listen, it's really good. It's a lot of food, though. So if you're really super hungry, I would say go to uh, Electric Umbrella and get the French dip burger. Like I said, this may be way too high on my list, but um, this is my list and I'm sticking to it. You may disagree, but I have a podcast and a forum. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. You're obviously allowed to disagree with me. But hopefully this list is helping you out and giving you some new ideas on where you might want to eat. All right, moving on, staying in Epcot, but going to the World Showcase and the American Adventure Pavilion. And I'm going to the Liberty Inn. And again, this is the only place really indoor air conditioned that you can eat in the American Adventure Pavilion. But guess what? They do have one thing here that's a good deal, and it's basically a surf and turf. So you can get a little steak with fried shrimp and a side of broccoli and fries. It's a good deal for a counter service restaurant. Honestly, I don't know why they put the broccoli on the plate. (laughs) It just gives me something to brush off. That's a great uh, joke by Mitch Hedberg. I haven't done a Mitch Hedberg joke in a while, but Mitch would say, I like to get fruit on top of my waffle, so I have something to brush off. Anyway, that's what I do with the broccoli. Just take that right off the plate. But it's a good, I mean, really, you can't get, a theme park counter service steak pretty much anywhere else in uh, Walt Disney World. So it's a good place to get one. And again, it's air conditioned. It's usually not that much of a weight in there. You can sit, relax, hide from the rain, hide from the sun for a while. All right. So moving on to number 18 and over at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And it is in Dino Land, Restaurant Asaurus. And why Restaurant Asaurus? Because they got rid of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite, totally over the top menu items in the mac and cheese hot dog. That was, I mean, that was insane. I don't know why I would eat that. I did get it. I really liked it. I guess when you're on vacation, you'll try anything except for Tangerine Cafe. Sorry, Moroccan listeners. <laughs> anyway, Restaurant Asaurus now has a grilled chicken BLT sandwich. I don't know what it has on it off the top of my head. It's delicious, though, and I got that last time I was there, and I really, really liked it. That is why Restaurant Asaurus ranks so highly on this list. Next up on my list over, oh, staying in Animal Kingdom, actually, in the Africa section of the park, and it's the Harambe Market. And the Harambe Market has a wide kind of variety of different foods that you can get. But to me, the main, like, the really cool part of the Harambe Market is the feel of it. You actually feel like you're in this African little village town having food outside. It's very, very cool. You can sit by the fence and hear the Wildlife Express, the train that goes to uh, Rafiki's Planet Watch. That goes by every few minutes. It's a neat place to go sit down outside and eat. Again, Animal Kingdom, it's the hottest park there is in Walt Disney World, so you might not want to go at like three o'clock in the middle of August. But like I always say, at least your food will stay hot. (laughs) It's not going to cool down. I really laughed at that at myself. That was funny. But it's not going to cool off. Anyway, 
Moving on, number 16, going back to Epcot in the UK Pavilion. And in, I'm talking about, of course, the world famous Yorkshire County Fish Shop. If you are a fish and chips guy, this is a great place to go. There's no seating. You kind of walk around with it as you, you know, eat, walking through World Showcase. There's always a long line there, though. Why is there a long line? Well, because the food's really good. Get some fish, put a little lemon on it, get those chips, or french fries as we call in America. Put a little bit of the vinegar on them, the malt vinegar. It is awesome. It's a great meal. It's not a snack. That's just an awesome meal by itself. So yeah, the fish and chips are number 16 for me. Number 15, and we're in the top 15, people. Here we go. Is in Magic Kingdom, in Fantasyland, and it's the Pinocchio Village House. Now, the food here is basically flatbreads, which are kind of individual pizzas. They do have a couple sandwich options, but I'm not going for the food. I am going for the atmosphere in particular for a few tables that have the glass window next to them where you can sit and look down into the load and unload station for It's a Small World. We do this on pretty much every trip. And again, the the flatbread pizzas are fine. But my kids love, absolutely love to get one of those tables. We'll wait. We actually will order our food and I won't stand there and watch people eat. I'm not a crazy person, (laughs) but I'll keep an eye on those tables because my kids love to sit there and love to wave at all the people going on Small World. And the people generally love to wave back. It's really a fun time. So that's one on my list for mostly for the atmosphere and for the fun. But the food ain't so bad either. (laughs) All right, so number 14, staying in Magic Kingdom, going over to Tomorrowland, and it is Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe. Basically, the main draw here is Sunny Eclipse. He's a little audio animatronic. At least I think he's an audio animatronic. I'm not kind of sure how the inner workings of the alien Sunny Eclipse work, but he's playing music the entire time you're in there. That's a lot of fun. My kids, again, if you have little kids, they'll love it. My kids love it. The menu is pretty good there as well. They have a really, really wide variety of food, sandwiches, hot dogs, stuff like that. It is always busy though. Always, always, always busy. You're always on a hunt for a table there. So I would recommend uh, if you want to go and see Sunny Eclipse, go at an off time at Cosmic Rays. Go at like 3 o'clock or 11 a.m., something like that, where it won't be completely full. Because if you're going for lunch, you know, 12, 1230 or dinner between five, maybe an eight, it's going to be crowded. Okay, moving on to number 13 on my list over at Epcot in World Showcase in the Norway Pavilion. And I'm going to pronounce this horribly. I've done it before. I'm going to do it again. Kringla Bakari Og Cafe. Yep, Norwegians. I just did that. Sorry. (laughs) Somebody call me or shoot me an email with a pronunciation of that. I think I've done that with the Google Translate lady on a different episode of the show. Anyway, the the bakery in the Norway Pavilion, basically you're going there for two things, school bread or lefse. They're the big, the huge, the big draws in that bakery or in that bakery. Sorry again, my Norwegian friends. So go uh, for the lefse and the school bread. Stay for the lady size beer. Yes, if you go in and get the when you get a beer in that uh, little establishment, the Norwegian cast members, if you order a beer, they'll ask you what size, a small or a large. And if you're a guy and you order a small, <laughs> they're gonna say a lady size beer. Yeah, they make fun of you pretty good. It's all in good fun. It's really funny. Any, it's really bad. So it's bad when the the male cast members do it to you because you're like, oh man, I'm not much of a man. I'm getting a little baby beer here. But it's worse when the female, when the girl cast members make fun of you. <laughs> I've been there with my wife and they, when I order the small beer and the girls say lady size beer back to me, my wife thinks that is hysterical. So yeah, go get a small beer just for the fun of it. All right, moving on to number 12 on my list, getting so close to the top 10, and it is in Epcot's Japan Pavilion, and it is Katsura Grill. 
What makes Katsura Girls so good? Well, it's the sushi. If you like sushi, they have a pretty big variety of sushi at Katsura Grill. They have sake, they have, or sake, how do you say it? My Japanese listener, sake. Sake, they have uh, different kinds of uh, Japanese beers there. So I actually introduced a couple of friends to uh, sushi on my last trip down by myself for work to Walt Disney World. So my friend, uh, Allie Miller, and my friend, Jen Hoffman, they've both been guests on this show. They each tried sushi for the first time uh, on a dare for me when we were down, when I was down in May. Uh, very mixed uh, <laughs> reactions out of Jen and Allie. I can't say either of them loved it, but we did get them the raw sushi. We didn't get it cooked. They had a uh, spicy tuna roll and California rolls. So they were champs. They ate it. I don't know if they'll eat it again, but if you do like sushi, if you are not kind of a wimp like Allie and Jen, <laughs> guys, I love you. You know, I do try uh Katsura grill. And if you know, Allie or Jen, tell them to listen to this episode and uh, ladies, I apologize. All right, moving on to number 11 and I'm going back to Hollywood studios and the back lot express. I love the interior, uh, the seating area of the Backlot Express. There are also tables outside where you can sit, but I like it inside. It's air conditioned. The food is really cool. They It's over by uh, Star Tours and the uh, Star Wars Jedi Training Academy stage. So the food inside, they have some Star Wars themes there. You can get the Star Wars uh, cups there. They also have the dark side chicken and waffles. So that has... Darth Vader on the waffles. That's pretty cool. I really like the restaurant. Inside, they also play while you're sitting and eating and having your drink. They play all like 70s, 80s, and 90s TV theme songs. So we kind of play name that theme song while we're in there. That's a lot of fun. So yeah, it's just a fun place to go. The food is good. The, the drinks are good. It's Star Wars kind of themed. It's fun. All right. Let's get to it. Top 10, according to me, Phil Gramlich from ear to their travel and the ear to their podcast and running for sandwiches. My top 10 counter service restaurants in Walt Disney world. Here we go. Number 10. And I can't pronounce it. So <laughs> it's, it's in France and I'm going to try it. I'm going to butcher it. You guys ready for this? Les Hall Boulangerie Patisserie is how I uh, heard myself say it in my head. It's probably, <laughs> it sounds a lot better when somebody from France, act, France actually says it. Anyway, it's the bakery in France basically is what it is. And I want to recommend something on the menu, but I can't say it. I'm the worst at pronouncing, as you already know, by listening to other shows or especially listening to this episode. I, I want to make a, uh, a recommendation for you here, but you're going to have to excuse my awful French accent. But I recommend the cross. <laughs> I can't even start to say it. The croissant jambon fromage. I know I pronounced it terribly. It's basically basically a cheese croissant, uh, but it's way better than that. So get that when you go to the bakery that I cannot pronounce in uh, the French Pavilion in World Showcase. Okay, moving on to number nine. We're staying at Epcot, going into Future World. The Land Pavilion, and yes, I am talking about Sunshine Seasons. Huge variety of food over there. They do have the Power Salad, which is an awesome salad option when you want something a little healthier. But when I say a little healthier, it's enormous. But it's a little known place that's always open, so it's open for breakfast in Epcot. And a lot of people don't realize it's there, and there aren't a lot of places to get breakfast in future world and Epcot. So go to sunshine seasons. The food selection is awesome. It's indoors. It's right by Soren. It's really cool. Nice place to get some food. There you go. Number nine, sunshine seasons. Okay. Number eight, I'm going to magic kingdom, going to main street. I had to do it. Casey's corner, number eight on my list. And if you're, if you know me at all, you're probably saying, I can't believe it's in your top five. I can't either. I had to break it down. I I I sat and and poured over this list for days. I couldn't get it higher than number eight on my list. But again, if you know me, you know I love me some Casey's Corner. 
I get the corn dog nuggets, dip it in mustard, have a ice cold uh, Coke Zero. That is my meal of choice. They also have the rotating, no, well, yeah, rotating rotational uh, <laughs> seasonal hot dog. When I say rotating, I think about this huge neon uh, hot dog on the roof, but that's not what it is. It is a seasonal hot dog that they have. That changes a few times a year. Uh, they have the regular hot dog, the chili cheese dog. It's just a great place to eat. You sit on Main Street. Everybody's walking down. They're so excited to be in Magic Kingdom. You listen to the piano player out there. His name is Jim. He's very cool. He's a nice guy. He's been there forever. You, you can't beat it. You sit outside. You smell the hot dogs from the kitchen. Everybody's got a smile on their face. They're at Magic Kingdom. Can't beat Casey's Corner. Okay, number seven, going over to Disney's Animal Kingdom. And this one is on my list. I haven't even eaten here, but it's on my list on recommendations from friends only. And it is in Pandora, the Satu Lee Canteen in uh, Pandora, the world of Avatar. It takes food, counter service food up about 10 notches. So again, I can't speak for the food. I did walk through. It's a beautiful little restaurant, just like the rest of that area is so cool and so well done. So again, number seven on my list is the Satu Lee Canteen at Pandora, the world of Avatar in Animal Kingdom. Again, this is my list, so, uh, you know, again, you might disagree with me. I'm totally cool with that. Let me know. I actually love to hear from you. I'd love to know what your top five are. So shoot me an email uh, to phil at ear to their travel.com and let me know what you think of my list. All right, moving on to number six, and it is on the waterfront, like Marlon Brando, over in the uh, Mexico Pavilion in Epcot, and it's La Cantina de San Angel. Allison Miller, you just heard me say it. You probably want to kill me. Uh, I love this place because it's outside. You sit on the water, watch them getting ready for um, illuminations. I couldn't get that out. For illuminations at night, grab a margarita, grab some nachos. I love the nachos there. Sit outside, you know, put, sit back, have your margarita, enjoy the little breeze coming off the water. Or if it's in the middle of summer, enjoy that you're undercover and you're not getting soaked by that thunderstorm that's rolling through. It's a, just a nice place to go outside and sit and have a meal in World Showcase. I love that place. All right. Number five. Here we go. Top five. Number five. It is over at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And it is Yak and Yeti Local Foods Cafe. So if you don't know, yes, there is a counter service uh, portion of Yak and Yeti. They, of course, have the table service restaurant as well. You can go there for breakfast. They have a whole bunch of different breakfast sandwiches. But I like going for lunch or dinner. They have the uh, Kobe beef burger and a Kobe beef hot dog. Both are way better than your standard uh, theme park burger or hot dog. They also have some Asian-inspired stuff like the Asian chicken wrap, uh, some pork egg rolls, chicken fried rice. French fries, although I don't believe they are Asian inspired. I think they're just regular French fries. So number five, uh, Yak and Yeti Local Foods Cafe. If you don't want to wait or to sit inside at Yak and Yeti, this is a great alternative. Now, number four on my list, and again, my top five are subjective, but number four on my list is mostly there for the ambiance and the theming. And I have great memories of it and great times going there with my kids. And it is Gaston's Tavern in the Magic Kingdom. Now, they did get rid of the pork shank there. That was a really big deal. People loved that pork shank. It is no longer being sold. They do still have the LeFou's Brew, which is, I guess, Disney's answer to uh, the beer-named drink from the park down the road that shall not be named. So LeFou's Brew was kind of fun to go get. But I just love the interior of Gaston's Tavern because it looks like it came right out of the movie. They have the big bar with Gaston's like throne chair that you can get pictures on. There are antlers in literally all of the decorating all over the bar or tavern. I love, love, love. Even if I get a pretzel and a soda from outside, just to bring it in, sit down and eat in there. It's one of my favorite things. Oh, and they do have one menu item, the cinnamon roll that is enormous. It's excellent. It's really good, but it's huge. It's bigger than my head. So <laughs> if you do decide to go there and get the cinnamon roll, bring a friend or two. 
Okay, moving on to number three, my top three. Number three on my list is over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, and it is, of course, Flame Tree Barbecue. And I have to be honest with you, nothing, nothing at all, nothing at Flame Tree is bad. I've had literally everything on the menu. It is all really, really good. They have a sampler platter, so get that. You can get a little bit of the pulled pork and the baked beans and all kinds of different stuff. So it's a really good place to go eat. They expanded the seating uh, last year, so there's seating available pretty much every time you go now. So yeah, it's a really good one. Number three on my list, Flame Tree Barbecue. And again, it's another place where (laughs) no matter the time of year, your food will certainly not get cold at Disney's Animal Kingdom. All right, down to the top two. My number two on my list, well, my top two are both at Magic Kingdom. Number two on my list is, drum roll please. That's a loud drum roll. (laughs) Anyway, it is Be Our Guest. Should I start singing Be Our Guest? No, not going to sing for you this episode. But Be Our Guest, awesome, awesome atmosphere. I love eating in that restaurant. If it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, but counter service there for breakfast or for lunch is excellent. You get to order beforehand, which is very cool. You can do your order online or on the app, on the My Disney Experience app. That's really cool. The food is very, very good. A little bit above most of the counter service options in Walt Disney World. I get to croak majeure, even though I can't say it. (laughs) It's a great sandwich. It's like a grilled ham and cheese, basically for us that cannot do a French accent at all. But it's an awesome place to go eat. I love it. I lo- I just love eating in that restaurant. It's one of my favorite places in all of Walt Disney World. And talk about feeling like it's right out of the movie, right? Everywhere kind of in New Fantasyland, especially Gaston's Tavern and Be Our Guest, just feel right out of the movie. So, yep, number two on my list is Be Our Guest, which means number one on my list if you haven't guessed it by now, is in, well, we'll say it's in Fantasyland and in Liberty Square in the Magic Kingdom, and it is Columbia Harbor House. That is my number one counter service location in all of the four theme parks of Walt Disney World. Why is it so good? Uh, A couple of reasons. One, the Anchors Away sandwich is just a tuna fish sandwich. I don't know what makes it so awesome, but I have to say it's phenomenal. It's awesome. It's great. I don't know what they put in there. I can't find a menu anywhere online. I've, I found some that have like, you know, guesses at the, at the sandwich, at what goes into the sandwich and it never tastes as good when I make them at home. So there's some ingredient that I'm missing. Anyway, the anchors away sandwich is awesome. It comes with fresh cut chips, which are not, I'm not saying French fries. They have fries there as well. But they have like kettle chips that are awesome as well. They have a a salmon dish there if you're into that. They have fried shrimp. They have fish and chips. So the food is really, really good. And again, I love the Anchors Away sandwich. That's what I get every time I go. But the other thing I love about Columbia Harbor House is the atmosphere, the music. You just feel like you're somewhere else when you're eating at Columbia Harbor House. I can't really explain it. You just have to go and kind of experience it for yourself and go upstairs. Here's my tip to you, but don't tell anyone else. First of all, don't tell anyone else about Columbia Harbor House if they don't know about it. And my tip to you is don't, and again, don't tell anyone, go upstairs, find a window that overlooks the Haunted Mansion. There's a great couple of tables that have a window that looks out to the courtyard in Liberty Square for the Haunted Mansion. You can sit there, eat your Anchors Away sandwich, drink your whatever you got, your lemonade or your Diet Coke or your Coke or your water. Sit, have your food, watch the people going in and out of Haunted Mansion. I love going at dusk. It's got really cool views, really cool pictures out that window. I love it. So that's why number one on my list is Columbia Harbor House. And that's it. That's my list from number 40-something to number one of my top counter service locations inside the Disney theme parks. And 
And that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ear to There podcast. Thank you so much for listening, for hanging with me, for staying with me for almost 51 or 52 minutes. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you have a new place or two or three or four that you're going to try uh, on your next trip to Walt Disney World. I wanted to include the resorts and Disney Springs. It just, I, I, here I am talking for 50 minutes. I would have been here for another two hours. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, please do me a favor, head over to ear to their travel.com slash iTunes. Leave me a honest rating and review there. It'll show you how to do it. There's a tutorial there at ear to their travel.com slash iTunes. That'll show you how to subscribe to the show to rate it and to review it on iTunes. I'd really appreciate it. The more subscribers, the more ratings, the more reviews, the more people get to hear it. So thank you so much in advance for doing that. And just remember, there will be a new episode of the Ear to Their podcast each and every Monday morning, as well as a new episode of the Ear to Their podcast, Walt Disney World Word of the Week. That'll be each and every Wednesday morning. And like I mentioned at the start of the show, I also have Running for Sandwiches, my new podcast, each and every Tuesday morning. You can find all of those on iTunes or over at runningforsandwiches.com. So again, thank you so, so much for listening. Have an awesome week. Bye-bye.